So I guess we're gonna talk about the great swords next. Greetings, traveler. I am Snapjelly, and the great swords in Skyrim are they realistic? Well, actually, surprisingly, yeah, they're they're fairly good. There are, however, still an awful lot of swords to choose from, so I decided to put them into two categories: the good and the not so good. You have arrived at the first episode, the good. Now each and every one of the swords in this video are still fairly usable in considering you have them in real life, but they all also have some design flaws that would, you know, not do the design any favors. Join me in my quest and I'll tell you why. Starting off with the Iron Greatsword. Well, to be honest, there's not an awful lot I can say about this sword. Well, first off, the edge is terrible. Like, even worse on the single-handed one. It's just scuffy and, and, and ruffled. But not unusable. I mean, it would still be sharp. It's fairly thin and with a diamond cross-section, so it would be pretty good for stabbing. The guard is proportioned nicely and the grip looks comfortable enough. Nothing noteworthy, really. The only thing that I could technically argue about are these extending parts right here. I mean, they're not bad, but they kind of just really don't do anything, so um, they're useless, but they don't really take anything away from the design. Overall, it's pretty good. Next up is the Steel Greatsword. Now this one seems like it's just directly inspired from actual historical greatswords. There is, however, one, just one Teetsy weetsy little nitpick that I that I want to address, and it's it's honestly it's a it's a it's a pathetically small nitpick, but I still wanted to say it, and that's the fact that the ricasso is thicker than the rest of the blade. Now the blade of the sword is of course going to be flat, and it's not going to be as comfortable as the grip to hold. Yet if it's dull like it is on great swords, then you can quite easily grab this and make half sorting easier and use it like a spear. On this design, however, it seems like the Ragasso was just as wide as the rest of the blade and they put some extra leather around it, making it even thicker. Now, that would not really be something you'd want because it would just not be very comfortable to hold. Quite, quite, a, quite a thick and relatively flat thing in your hand. Yeah, it's not really comfy. And if you look at historical designs, you can see that usually the Ragasso is just the same width as the blade or even thinner than the blade. But it's just a teeny tiny nitpick. I mean, honestly, this would still be very usable. Oh, I could also say that the guard is arguably a bit too small. Like on great swords, the grips are longer and the guard needs to be proportioned accordingly. And you could say that the guard on this sword is, is a little bit smaller than what you would really want. But that's kind of a problem that all of these swords have, so I'm gonna ignore it for now. Next up is the silver great sword. Now, considering this sword is the same length as all the others, you can see that the grip is comparatively longer. Now, this doesn't necessarily make the design worse, it is just a personal preference. It's a choice that you can make. Various designs in history also had that. And it increases the leverage that you have, so it essentially makes you better at cutting. You can, you can cut harder because of it, technically. I mean, it also has its downsides, but... It's honestly, it's just preference. It doesn't really make the design any worse. Also, the guard is way thicker than necessary, but still, you know, it doesn't necessarily make the blade bad. I mean, I wouldn't use it, but you could still, you could still use this. Next one is the ebony blade. No, not the ebony greatsword, the ebony blade. And, uh, well, this seems like, uh, like a nodachi to me. So yeah, maybe the blade is a little bit too thin right here, and also the, I do have some some questions about the hilt. Like it's just it's shaped oddly. It's quite a unique shape, but honestly, I don't really know if this would be comfortable or not. I would have to try it out myself. For now, it gets my seal of approval. Next up is the dwarven greatsword. Now, if the blade is thin enough. This could work. Honestly, I, I feel like this could work because it, it's honestly, it's not that much wider than all of the other designs. 
It is a little bit wider and that will make it a bit heavier and a bit bulkier, but it does have a fuller that goes all the way up which makes the blade lighter again. So if this blade is thin enough, I feel like it would be light enough for you to be able to use it. However, the grip is bad. That is honestly is just terrible. Just a bunch of individual nodges and, and ridges. That is not comfortable to hold at all. It does look like it's thick enough though, so that's a plus. But it also seems like the pommel has some sort of upwards extensions. On any form of two-handed sword, you would want your left hand, considering you're right-handed, to be as far away from the guard as possible. You would hold it essentially just very loosely on the pommel. This gives you the most leverage and it makes your swings the strongest. So you would want to hold that pommel with your left hand. But there are some extending pieces right here that are just gonna dig into your hand. Yeah, you don't want that. So that is a bad, that is a very bad. Get rid of that. Otherwise, uh, it, it's, not, it's not great, but I think it's usable. I, I honestly have faith in this. The next one is the Elven Greatsword. Now, out of all the swords on this list, I probably dislike this one the most. But, <laughs> I gotta be fair, and I think that even though it would be quite weird to use, I still think that you could make something from this. I mean, its center of mass is gonna be somewhere around here. There's, there's, gonna, there's a lot of weight right here, and that's arguably not something that you'd want. So it would just be a weird thing to swing around, it would feel really weird. But not unusable, I think it's something you can get used to. Once more, very close to the guard, it's designed so that it throws swords off to the side, which honestly, in my opinion, is just bad. Like, it doesn't have to do anything bad, but it's not, it's not gonna do anything good for you either. It is just gonna make parrying harder. And uh, I, it's very hard to see, but it kinda looks like the grip is pointy in, in a way. I don't know what material it is, maybe it's soft material and it doesn't matter, but anyway, that's weird. Overall, I also want to make a note of that the grip is simply thicker here than it is there, which again might not be the most comfortable thing to use, but you know, that, that's personal. And the reason that I put this in the good category is simply because of the blade. Yes, this sword would be quite a weird thing to use, but the blade looks very reasonable, very smooth and reasonable size as well. I feel like you can do quite a lot of damage cutting with this and it is also incredibly pointy. It's a very, very pointy point right there. So it kind of makes up for all of its flaws by being good at some other things, in my opinion. But honestly, this was a difficult one. The next one is the Dragonbone Greatsword. Now again, with this one, I was kind of doubting. It was hard for me to choose if this belonged in the good or in the somewhat less good category. Because overall, it looks really nice. I feel like it's proportioned really well, way better than some of the other designs. But it also has quite a lot of problems. First off, there's kind of, there's like a nudge on the grip, or very close to the guard. That is precisely where you'd want your primary hand to be, very close to the guard. And I don't know how thick that actually is, but it's, it's most likely not gonna be very comfortable to hold, so that's weird. There, of course, is still the iron rim in the middle of the blade, going all the way across the blade, which will significantly decrease cutting power. As you would slice through your opponent, that rim will hit your opponent and slow the cut down. That's, yeah, well, that's simply it. Also, maybe want to take a side note of if bone is honestly that weak of a material that needs iron reinforcing, then I don't know how well the edge is gonna hold up just in general, but that's a side note. I'm just gonna have to assume that it would work. And there's also some serration right here, like some, some rough parts, some, some scuffs, some ruffles. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, why? Get, get rid of that. That's not gonna do anything for you, get it out of here. The reason that I eventually decided to still put it in the good category is because, well, thinking about how I would handle this sword, I think that it would feel pretty good compared to the others. I feel like you would be able to swing this sword around fairly normally. So even though it still has quite a lot of flaws in its design that would make it less effective at certain things, 
still, I feel like because you could handle this sword like you would handle any other sword, that it deserves to be in the good category. And last but not least, the Orcish Greatsword. What? The Orcish Greatsword? Yes, the Orcish Greatsword. But Jelly, you're, you're asking, Jelly, how, how is the Orcish Greatsword good if the Orcish Single-Handed Sword was in, in the what category? Like, like, how does that even make sense? They're practically the same. Well, no, they're not. In fact, I took a good look at this and I found that the Orcish Greatsword actually doesn't have any of the flaws that made me put the single-handed Orcish Sword in the what category. Let me explain. One of the things that bothered me on the single-handed Orcish Sword was its weird forwards curvature. Now this confused some people saying, well, there are various um, forwards curved swords like this. And I also said that there are various forwards curved swords like this. So why is that bad? Well, because the curvature starts right after the handle. Like right where the grip stops, the sword starts curving forward. Whereas if you look at historical designs of forwards curved swords, they start curving somewhere around this portion of the blade. At the cutty part of the blade, the part that you're supposed to cut with, the sword start curving forward. And this does various things. First off, the curve amplifies cutting power. Secondly, in a lot of cases there's more mass behind the blade, so that would once more increase cutting power. And thirdly, because the larger portion of the blade is straight, it is not off balanced, like I complained that the Orcish sword was. But the Orcish great sword does not have this problem because it is straight. And the curve only starts at the cutting portion. The part that you're supposed to cut with is where the curve starts, amplifying cutting power and not making the sword unbalanced. Second thing that I complain about on the Orcish sword are these individual ridges. Now you might think they are still there on the great sword, but they are a little bit different. Just look very closely at its design and how the light affects the design. If you look closely, you can see that on the single-handed Orcish sword, there is a connection between the edge of the blade and the thickest part of the blade. Right? They are connected in a way. So, at these points on the sword, the edge is a little bit thicker. For no reason, this does nothing except slow the cut down. But on the great sword, this isn't the case. The edge is smooth. So, even though the sword still has these individual points, they are not any thicker and thus they will not slow the cut down. It is still far from preferable, but the cut would be way smoother. And lastly, something I want to say is that the grip looks just fairly normal and comfortable, which it doesn't on a single-handed one. Overall, I gotta say that this sword still leaves much to be desired, but it is not nearly as bad as its single-handed counterpart. And thus, I believe it deserves to be in the good category. So that was it guys, I hope you enjoyed. You can click the button right here to watch part 2, or you can click the button right here to see if the single-handed swords of Skyrim are realistic. And thank you for joining my quest, and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys.